Okay, now that we know a little bit about blood pressure and heart rate, we're going to do our first experiment. And the purpose of this experiment is to evaluate the effects of body position on heart rate and blood pressure. So, the question is, what effects will the following body positions have on heart rate and blood pressure? And these positions are sitting, reclining, standing immediately, and then standing after three minutes. So how do you think heart rate and blood pressure will change in all three categories? Well, first of all, let's think about heart rate. In which of these categories will your heart rate be the slowest, and in which one will it be the highest? Let's look here. So which one is easiest for the heart? Well, it's probably going to be reclining. When we're reclining or supine, laying on our backs, uh, our hearts only have to pump the blood sort of in a horizontal direction. It doesn't have to pump it against the force of gravity. So in this case, we might expect the heart rate to be a little bit lower than normal because it has less work to do. But then think about what happens when you immediately stand up. All of a sudden, again, that blood's going to pool down to your extremities, and so that's going to drop the pressure. And the pressure drops too low, you pass out. So what is your heart going to do to compensate? Well, if you said it's going to increase the rate at which it beats, you are correct. So we'd expect the heart rate to increase uh, initially upon standing until the blood vessels get a chance to constrict and help to stabilize that pressure. So after you make your predictions for heart rate, you then want to make a prediction for blood pressure as well. Which one will have the highest blood pressure and which one will have the lowest blood pressure? Okay, let's talk about the procedures for conducting this experiment. Now, ideally, you would have somebody else in your household that you're conducting this experiment on. You should not be doing it on yourself, if at all possible. It's very difficult to record your own blood pressure. It is possible, but it's a lot easier if you have a willing study subject in your household. So first off, you want to start out with them sitting down for about three minutes, and after three minutes, you want to record their baseline heart rate and blood pressure. You don't want them talking during this period because that can elevate things and mess around with your measurements. Next, you want them to lay down for three minutes, okay, and while they're laying down, go ahead and attach that blood pressure cuff, and at the three minute mark, you're going to take a heart rate, and then you're going to take a blood pressure uh, using your sphygmomanometer. Finally, you're going to do uh, their heart rate and blood pressure after they stand up. So you want to keep that cuff attached but deflated, have them stand up, and then generate uh, the, uh, fill the blood pressure cuff one more time, uh, get the pressures, and then get the heart rate. Because initially upon standing up, remember what happens is blood tends to pool in the extremities and sometimes you'll get an elevated heart rate and depressed blood pressure. Last but not least, you want them to remain standing, deflate that cuff, and then three minutes later, you want to fill the cuff up again, measure the heart rate, measure the blood pressure, and record your data in the table above. Okay, our second experiment of the day is to figure out the effects of age on cardiovascular fitness. So our question is, what effect does age have on cardiovascular fitness? And you probably have a pretty good prediction about this, right? We think that younger people in their 20s and 30s tend to be pretty fit, and as you get in your 40s, 50s, and 70s, and 80s, etc., you get less cardiovascularly fit. So think about if you were to get up right now and go to your mailbox and check your mail, uh, if you're in your 20s to 40s, it probably wouldn't result in much of an elevation of heart rate. On the other hand, if you look at your grandparents who are in their 80s or so, and they go to the mailbox, they sometimes will have an elevated heart rate that remains elevated for several minutes after they've done that brief period of exercise. So we can assess cardiovascular fitness by having you do some exercise and then determining how long it takes your heart rate to drop back down to the normal level. Okay, so once you have those data collected, you then want to go back to the website and click on the linked table. That'll take you to Google Docs, and then just find an area that doesn't have a student information in there, and go ahead and paste your information in there. And what you're going to see is that once you enter the heart rate, the systolic blood pressure, the diastolic blood pressure, it will automatically calculate for you the pulse pressure as well as the mean arterial pressure. It will also calculate something called CO, or cardiac output. Now this is the estimated uh, blood output of the heart, how much blood it's pumping per minute, and it's calculated by taking the heart rate and multiplying it by 70 mils. And 70 mils is sort of the average uh, ejection volume for a nice, healthy, uh, average-sized human. Okay, now once those data are entered for everybody in the class and your instructor, that is me, has let you know, uh, you will see that data down below appear in these yellow tables. The yellow tables are what you are going to graph. So for the first one, it's looking at the effects of uh, body position on heart rate. So we're going to select that data, and then simply click on Insert Graph up here, Insert Chart, 
and a bar chart will look just fine for this. So again, lying down, sitting, standing, and standing after three. You can see that standing initially has the highest heart rate, and this is kind of what we expected because as you stand, blood tends to pool initially down at your feet, and so the heart, in order to compensate, will start to beat faster in order to bring the blood pressure back up uh, and keep you from going hypotensive and then potentially you know, passing out. So that is a good graph right there. And of course yours will look different because it will have different data. Now let's look at the other data. So the next table will be the effects of body position on different blood pressures. So we're gonna go back up there, select the data and go insert and then graph. Now what you can see there, it's got four different bars for each of the body positions and that kind of makes it hard to compare, uh, for example, systolic blood pressure for lying down to systolic blood pressure for sitting. You can see the values are very, very similar. So what I want you to do is go down here and click on switch rows and columns. You should get something like this. And this allows us to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. So here we can compare systolic blood pressure uh, between laying down, sitting, uh, standing, and standing for three. And again, you can see the systolic blood pressure might be a little bit lower for that standing for three, and, and you can figure out why that might be. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close that out. And last but not least, we're gonna look at the estimated cardiac output um, for the different body positions. And again, this is just an estimation and it's based uh, solely on really heart rate and that multiplier of 70 mils. So go back there, insert chart, and that looks just fine there. Again, these data are based on heart rate. And so whatever value had the fastest heart rate would have the pro fastest projected or our largest projected cardiac output. In that case, it would be standing. In reality, probably not standing. Probably we might have a slower or smaller ejection volume uh, if you're standing, uh, if blood is, is not going through the process of venous return back to the right ventricle, or sorry, right atrium. So that's something to think about as well. So anywhere, that's how to graph the first three graphs as part of this lab report and this lab activity.